Marshall skips away. Marshall skips away. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett and the Dragons win the grand final. Whips that one away and Kane Williamson and his team now world test champions. Welcome back to the TGIF podcast. Thank God it's footy. How's the last week treated you, my bro? Yeah, she's been good. We've had a uh, the first dub of the season, get it out of the way early doors. Yeah. We'll take that. Thank you very much. Um, and it's been a nice, um, good start to week. Rocking in on Monday, wearing me Tigers gears. Um, so that was a good start. We're the only day in class this week, which is quite nice. We've been in the pool the last couple of days. Um, so feeling the sun, feeling the, the chlorine. Yeah. Um, we're looking a little bit worse. You're looking a little bit um, of a... On like the shade of pink. slightly redder scale, but this morning I rocked up and I was already looking brown. The, the burn had gone, so this is obviously fresh from today, unfortunately. But uh, and then um, on the road again, uh, off tomorrow, off to Thames to check out the old school camp. So, bit of a roadie, uh, which is which is quite nice. And then back in the pool Friday. So um, yeah, fairly cruisy, um, cruisy week, but. Um, Good to have, good to have some footy back. Good to see the Tigers playing over the weekend. I was frothing for it all week and um, tuned in with old Roman and uh, Finney came in to have a look for a bit. But good to, um, good to sit there with a, a Warriors fan who had to sit there and see them lose. Now, um, I guess we get straight into that. Coming off that, now it was like I said, you know, it was a good win. Good to get a dub on the board early, but probably not the performance that any Tigers fans are really after. Like I think, obviously, you throw a red card into the mix, it changes the complexion of the game, and for us, it changed the the game. I think in favour of the Warriors, we played awesome for the first twenty minutes. Um, I think we yeah we we looked really good, and then as soon as that happened, they went down to twelve. They kind of went up again. We sort of dropped off a little bit, and it probably wasn't until the last fifteen or so when we had a lot of our um, yeah, fringe players on, I think, well, we played our better footy again. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> win's a win. We take it. Look, nervy at the end, though. Yeah, it's a strange one, the old pre-season. Um, you see, what, 30-odd blokes getting a run out on the day. Um, the first hit out in a few months, so you can obviously excuse a bit of sloppiness here and there, but... It, it wasn't. It, it, I don't it, think it was a very sloppy game either. I mean, the the shot was a bit off. I've got to say, the old high yeah, shot. There was a oh, yeah, and then the 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 old Sinbin for Fino was um, the Sin Sinbin chucked in there as well. I wasn't yeah. too happy about it. I uh, um, don't know how you feel as a Tigers fan. Obviously, the rules are the rules. Uh, yeah, on that one, I guess. I think. Oh, I mean, it's. I think. I think it is. It's, like it's a little bit soft, and, probably looking at it. Rules are the rules. Um, but um, yeah, it is a little bit soft. But the old. And the old red card challenge, that was pretty full on. That was a big arm. That was a big knock to the face. Big knock to the head for old mate there. So, um, but I think he's I think he's a right depth from KC. He, he, um, he suffered a pretty gnarly concussion, I think, when he had his debut for the Doggies there uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but a couple of, I, th- I think, probably best performer of the day, sort of in that second half there, was for the Warriors, and it was Ben Farr. Uh, I think that's his name. Young blonde fella. Um, I thought he was awesome, and he was he was kicking goals for them at the end there as well. Um, I thought he was a really handy player. I thought he played really well in that second half. Glad like to watch coming through for the Waz, yeah, potentially, po- possibly. Um, but um, no, we'll, we'll take it, and then we um, get to take your boys on this weekend. Yeah, TGI uh, Derby on the cards this yeah, weekend. Uh, uh, the Dragons coming in fresh off a heavy community, a uh, community charity shield uh, loss to a. Um, Cody Walkerless and Latrellless South, so uh, obviously not the best of signs for Dragons fans there. Uh, the one try we did score was off a, an errant pass from uh, Lachlan Elias that Rava snapped up. So, yeah, I mean, a little bit of worrying signs there, but obviously coming up against a team that's decent for the was other. It was a 6 at half time, wasn't it? Yeah, something Six like that. at half time and looked like the, the Dragons were in there. Um, but yeah, sort of running away with it there in the second half, the Bunnies. But probably, I think, maybe not the scoreline and such, but probably the way that most people would have picked this one, I'd say. Uh, yeah. Even without <laughs> Latrell and, um, and Cody Walker there. Um, 
But there is good news, I guess, for the Dragons. You've some signing news locking it, locked in today, I was saying. Luciano Le Lewis coming back uh, to the Dragons on yeah. a three-year deal. Uh, rumours were last week he was asking around the 900k mark, which seems a bit um, big. big scene. So big. fingers crossed we haven't gone out there and blown you know that much of our cap on Le Lewis. But yeah, obviously um, showed some signs of promise at the cows without it really coming off um i thought we saw the, his best footy probably in a west jersey probably um, yeah and every third week you know there was it was quite a hit of very miss player. yeah very hit and miss um, so oh, very just, suited to a team like the tigers or the dragons you know yeah where he'll, he'll go off one week and he'll he'll score two tries and run 120 meters and break four tackles and then he'll have a game where he has four errors and something like that you know make two tackles or something in the whole game um, so it is, it's, yeah, it's not the player you want to be going out and throwing 900k at, but um, surely good to have him back at the club. Yeah, look, it's um, definitely uh, no disrespect to you know who we had running around last year, but um, a little bit of X factor, I suppose. Um, a little bit of a, a POD sort of player there yeah. in the back row. Oh, yeah, definitely. Got a bit Not of, having to rely on everything going through Ben Hunt. A little bit of flair, just, flair you know, to him, I think. A little, little bit of early yeah. ball for Luciano and yeah. see what he can do with it. Take the pressure off Ben Hunt. Shit a few a times. Probably my favourite position, I think, in, in rugby league is a, is a second row that's got a little bit to them, you know, and, um, and that's Luciano there. So, yeah, good for the, the Dragons. To, um, Interesting to see if Flano can get the best out of him, get that consistency going because, yeah, one week he'll be... 9, 10 out of 10, and the next week it'll be 2 or 3. Um, so, yeah. It'll be um, a bit, yeah. of a, bit of a roll of the dice for bit the drags. A bit of a roll of the dice, but I think it should turn out to be a positive one. Um, Hamlin Uele, extending there with the Sharkies, I've seen. Yeah, rumours going around, uh, obviously off the back of AFB, signing with the Sharkies, that... Um, the Warriors were tabling a big money. I up believe, there. yeah, thinking just to try and keep that um that double barrel sort of quite double very barrel, high. big boy in yeah, the front row. Clearly, they've got um they've got quite a few um double barrels there, and obviously bringing back bringing two more in this season, uh, with RTS and Harris Tavita coming back into the mix. Um, it does make the Warriors um, huge favourites, I think, especially after last year. And Premiership the, threats, maybe? Premiership threats, uh, well and truly. Um, you know, it's kind of all, as much as I hate to say it, it's kind of all teed up to be this nice fairy tale finish for um, Sean, Sean Johnson. Sean Johnson. Yeah. Um, but, um, New Devo resident, which um, I suppose you've got to shout you've got him to shout out him out a little bit. But, like, also, you know. Just think of him as the Kiwis halfback rather than. Um, I saw him in my Tigers game and he didn't, he didn't really give me much of the Yelza, so um, I guess, yeah, maybe maybe no big ups to Sean Johnson. Um, but, um, yeah, maybe that's the key, the old, the old double barrel. But, yeah, good for the Sharkies to, to lock lock him in. Yeah, uh, 100%. Good for them. Good sign keep a, keep a double barrel there. Now um, they'll have two double barrels rampaging in the front row yeah, there. But, um Continuing that double barrel train, um, the quota is going to drop next year in the NRL the, potentially. You well, know, there may be some some more. There may be some more coming, but we're going to lose. Maybe a net gain. We're going to lose overall. one. We're going to lose a big one as well. A um, high profile double barrel. J W H, Wadia Hargreaves retiring at the end of the year. Yeah, uh, what is it? Sixteen seasons in the NRL, fifteen at the Chooks. Um, absolutely. Running his uh, tits off, legend defenders. He's a uh, legend of the game. Smashing blokes, getting in fights, uh, getting sent off, getting lengthy bans. And involved, I'm afraid of a little ban. Involved in probably my, one of my favourite ever tackles, uh, Simon Dwyer, um, the big hat on w, JWH, possibly the ball back in uh, that final. In that final, yeah, um, yeah, probably my, my the coolest tackle we've ever seen in a, in a game of league. Um, and he's on the, the receiving Probably end. not something, uh, if he's listening, that he'd, he'd want to be um, reflecting I'm sure on. he'd, he probably, you know, Simon Dwyer was a big up and coming player. Simon actually. Dwyer might want Simon to Dwyer, he might, he'll be, he'd love it, I'm sure. I don't sure. know if it goes down as one of JWH's uh, personal career highs. He surely shouts out a little bit of Simon Dwyer every now and again, though, you know. Um, obviously, uh, with his injury there, you know, he might be, you know, they might be mates, we don't, we don't really know. Um, 
But no, yeah. Slip those all seem to be made, so you never know. Retiring um, at the end of the year, it's um, and as it's back there, leaving the roosters, hanging up the boots. Takes a little bit of the um, I don't want to say the edge off the roosters, but he certainly brings a, a little bit of sting. A little bit of sting, a little bit of spark to that um, that roosters outfit. Uh, you know, anytime that he comes up against South, he'll he'll probably end up roughing someone up, uh, getting in a little bit of a, a hoo ha. Um, as much as it is really just handbags these days, but uh, yeah, sad to see him go, I suppose. But hell of a career. Can't can't blame him. Sixteen years in the front row in the NRL. International footy as well, so um, yeah. We did have a. Um, he he will become a three hundred gamer this year, right? Or is he already won? Already won is I'm pretty sure he's already won. Uh, I think so. Um, possibly last year, right? What is that? Some chemical. Two ninety eight. Two ninety eight. Okay. So he'll become a three hundred gamer early this year. Good on him. Shout him out. Well done. Um, there was a couple other games over the uh, the weekend there as well, or earlier on in the week. The uh, obviously, actually, while we were we were mid record, weren't we tuning in last time? Uh, the two All Star games, uh, Indigenous All Stars, taking the double this time around. Yeah, uh, a good little win there, twenty two fourteen in the men's, and completely smoked the the Maori women's team there, twenty six four. I thought it was a it was a pretty good game. Um, Did you watch the second half there in the end? What's that? The last week? Yeah, yeah. I ended up watching it. Um, look, I thought it was uh, Maori played well without sort of having the sort of cutting edge that yeah. Indigenous seem to have with the likes of uh, Cody Walker, the trail sweeping down that left for Addo Carr. Um, it was a pretty dangerous combination. Couple of tries there for Addo Carr. Uh, one obviously off the, a little bit of a juggle, was it? Jesse, Jesse Arthur's or? Uh, I, I can't, I don't know. Team Team Mocko. Uh, dropped it in the end goal and um, Addo Carr pounced on it. Yeah. Maldi, yeah, scored a good good couple of tries, but uh, only at the start and end of the game, so, yeah. Yeah, can't really say, yeah, can't really say it's one that you sort of really watch with too much interest. Um, not interest, it's I mean, an assessment in yeah. the team, like, yeah. I don't really mind which team wins, but it is, um, obviously, being from New Zealand, uh, good to see the, the, the Maldi get the up one, if they yeah. can, but... Shout out to the Indigenous, it was a sick night. Um, the best part, I think, as always, is the uh, the old uh, haka slash war dance the Indigenous war dance at the start. Yeah, it's a, go pretty it's hard an awesome spectacle, so yeah, cool thing to, to come from this part of the world, obviously. Um, also, I guess an international new, but an international footy, we've seen a new uh, Kiwis coach drop today. Yep. Uh, Stacey Jones now... First hell of a hell of a rise from twenty eleven being just about a say, referee and ref the under fifteen. Um, ref our Harbour. first ever game of rugby league that we both played together, uh, or both played ever. Uh, I yeah. believe first game. I don't. I think I'm assuming we lost. We got smashed. Smashed that like game. Fifty nil. And you were getting called beeps by everyone on the sideline. I think, and you had your pink boots. Yeah, purple boots. Purple yeah. boots. Um, um, and shout out uh, Cartoon Hooper. If you ever, if you ever going to hear this, um, for um, going for a nice oh, footy nice player uh, clearance from our own end goal, uh, kicking it into the back of one of our own players, and then they scored, I believe. Yeah, they um, picked it up and scored rather than just hands on the ball or even uh, pocket dead. Yeah, t- trying to clear it long. You know, it's not a, it's not footy. It's not a. Uh, it's not really the ter- league is all about. Like, the surely ball you wouldn't hands. even do that in union either. Yeah. Like. If you're gonna do it, you pick it up before yeah. you kick it. Leagues, league is all about having the ball in your hands. You don't want to be uh, giving it away like so. Um, but yeah, coming from a uh, a humble beginning there, oh, no, not so. Can't humble. say any of that. Well, 
you know, a couple of those rugby boys were probably half decent uh, defensively for us that game. I can't say any of us sort of. I don't think I would have done lit too, the world up, but done yeah, too much in definitely that game. one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen on a rugby league I'm, field. I believe. Clearance. I believe my bit, my greatest ever game in rugby league may have been my last, and it was. I don't think you played that game against Fongapoa. Um, no, I don't think we had, did, we had, we had the bear, the bear thirteen. Um, played and, in eighty. Yeah, played an 80. Uh, played yeah, maybe like 55 yeah, or 60 played, minutes. Played, four, long played the whole game. game. We might have had 14 maybe actually. I remember actually. we played 40 minutes. Um, might have been 14 players. I might have had a little break possibly, but I played most of the game. And, uh, In the front row. Yep, yeah. always rocking the eight. Uh, rocking the eight. number eight. Leaving the tackles to uh, to Moggy B or Toby, Moggy or Toby Bly, or whoever yeah. was there, they'd do the tackling. Toby loved the I'd, tackle. I'd happily get two, uh, two head-ups a set. Um, just standing on there, check, give me the ball, give me the ball, obviously come here 13, pretty much bang on 85s, playing in an under 85s division, and obviously, um, you know, not, not much of, not much grunt to me really, but by that, I was quite cocky, you know, so I was probably running at these dudes who are a little bit younger, uh, thinking I had it, broke the line, uh, and kind of just, you know, you're running, I've been running for 25 minutes, and that's not uh, 25 minutes, 25 metres. Yeah. Not something you do with uh, the 8 or the 10 on your back playing league. Not too often, no. Uh, and we're, we're, we're running and everyone's yelling, and I can, it's me against the fullback, and it's like, shit, I don't know what to do here. I've never been in a situation like this in my life. And I kind of like, do I go for the step? What do I do? And I kind of like half stepped and half like tried to run through him and just kind of like hit him and then kind of just got like tackled by this fucking smaller little fullback and looked like an idiot. Um, but really I should have just chucked the hand up, given the big see you later and ran on through for um, my first ever four pointer. Um, can't say I've across the try and can't say I've um, scored any points uh, in rugby league. Probably... It's probably my claim to fame in terms of rugby league, I'd say, uh, in terms of a playing highlights. Line uh, break. Yeah, a one, one, line, one, one, one line break. Um, one line Trucked out a full 80. I remember getting a... That's a hell of a performance. By the a swing and arm from Toby Byte um, into the jaw Ooh. against Long Bay on the front field, and they had that... Um, Huge number. He was. It was a number six. It was six. I think. Yeah, my fella. Massive. And, up, and yeah. I ended up being one on one with him, running at me, and I kind of just chucked an arm out, and he just ran straight, <laughs> through, straight through, yeah. through and scored under the post. And I was like, "Oh fuck! What do you do? What do you do there, mate?" Like, uh, I would have been sent into oh. bloody next week, but. Um, but yeah, humble beginnings. Stacey Jones uh, is, is starting out, starting out riffing um, Mahu versus TGS, and not, uh, re- not sure if that's really the start, start of his start, rugby league journey. It's the but start of the next part of his life, um, maybe you know, post, following on post playing career. You know, here he is uh, taking on the Kiwis role. So interesting to see what he what he can do. Yeah, well. I mean, he's got a hell of a team at his disposal. Uh, doesn't have to really uh, do too much. Well, well, that probably doesn't really have a lot of time to do too much coaching with them around. Um, I guess he was involved as the assistant, so possibly sure. Sort of just being a, uh, a Kiwis legend, Stacey Jones, he probably knows a fair few of the lads yeah, that are involved anyway. He'll know what he's doing, and um, you know, you just sort of you just build on that thirty mil from last year and hope that. The lads can go Continue. up with the same fire in their performance, and mm. the talent should fucking carry us to a decent amount anyway. Um, but yeah, do we have any tests coming up this I'm not year? Too sure, we should do it at the end of the year, but I'm not sure if we have any of that during the Origin period potentially. You're going to be fast there. Internationals 2020. Oh, it's not out yet. It's probably out somewhere else, but yeah, interesting to see how uh, old mate Stacy, the little general, goes at the helm. Um, Kiwi's coach. Fingers crossed we keep that momentum going. But uh, speaking of momentum, We'll switch lanes over to uh, the Arsenal. They're all goon down, brother. We're, we're coming in hot. Coming off that break, 
I was, I'm, I'm a, I'm a huge, uh, I was going to say, uh, an unadvocate, if that's really the right term. I'm not an advocate for um, big long breaks in, in the football season, international as breaks. As a viewer, it does suck. As a viewer, uh, obviously that unusual new winter break that we, we had to endure there. Um, but this has been, it's just been perfect for, for the arse. It's exactly what we've needed. Um, looking, looking rusty there and we've come back firing. Goals are plenty. Yeah, uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, another five goals up against Burnley <clears throat> to take it to 14 goals in February, three games. Three against Liverpool, six against West Ham, and uh, the five there. And yeah, I thought it was a really dominant performance as well. Like, it was kind of like, it was any time Burnley got the ball, we went straight back in their half. Like, they had a couple of breaks. Uh, the one that Kiwi all sort of nodded behind for a corner. Maybe a he's been awesome, Kiwi. Like, I think he's been like one of our better players. Took a little bit of time to settle, but like now that he's sort of a year into his Arsenal oh, career, looks like a hell of a player. Yeah, and, very, very good player. Uh, definitely a better defensive option to have there at left back compared to Zinchenko. Yeah. And and I think better defensively than Kiantini. Yeah, Tenny obviously um, he was he was one of our better defenders in a shit back four. But I think it was a, was, you, again like a bit like Zinchenko better going forward. And yeah, Zinchen, and Zinchen, Zinchenko's probably Tenny was real quick. But Zinchenko's got this this role like what Xhaka could do of playing the left back, dropping into the middle, that sort of thing. He plays that perfectly, you know, like very handy player to have, you know, Zinchenko. Um, but yeah, Kivu was just being yeah. I think maybe one of our better players these last two games. Yeah, and um, big part as to why I think Ryers only had to make two saves in like the last three games. Yeah, and Ryers looking very comfortable now on the ball. Um, starting to see a little bit more of uh, what everyone was talking yeah. about when we signed them. Uh, I thought when we signed them, is he really that much better with his feet than Ramsdale? You know, I always ran. Always, not always rated Ramsdale, but well, started to rate him with his feet after last year and thought that was definitely not a position we needed to improve. But, um, look, fair play. I guess you can s sort of start to see what um, Arteta was talking about. Yeah, and 100%. Uh, Odegaard, what a goal to open the scoring. Yeah. Uh, lovely little... Really good finish. Half up. volley from outside the box. Um couple more for Saka obviously one from the spot and then uh, Trossard and Habits around it all off so yeah good to see good to see the, the latter there and Habits scoring and I think Trossard yeah possibly um, I think I've just been saying for a while I think one of our most underrated him. players oh. Trossard and to think we could have got Mudrick and paid what all that money for him and we got five times instead. more and we, um, we but yeah we paid like what 20 something for a trust probably line. wasn't thinking that at the time um, wasn't like the the sign that he thought this Mudrick had a lot of hype around him but obviously yeah but trust has proven in the Premier up. League he's come to us he's continued on he's probably playing better in a, in a different setup, better players around him and he's playing in like three or four different positions yeah you know, exactly left right up front uh, midfield <clears throat> hell of a player um, yeah all the talk of uh, a striker sort of seems to have fired those other front three attacking players oh, everyone is, everyone's, everyone's scoring now everyone's trying to get involved so it's good we're first time ever five consecutive uh, five goals in consecutive away games yep first time uh, ever in the Premier League first time that Arsenal have ever <clears throat> started the calendar year with four uh Four straight wins, four or five, possibly. Yeah, five, two, yeah. yeah. I did um, see that. Um, oh, it's good. It's a good, good time of the year to be playing well. Unfortunate this morning that we couldn't see Bradford hold on. I thought they were going to hold on and keep a draw there against City, um, which would have, would have been very handy for us. But I believe <laughs> we still have to play City. We um, do have a game against them at the Etihad. And do so Liverpool play, also have to play City still as well? So. Other. Um, I think there's also a Manchester derby, so a couple of results. Obviously, we need to go our way, but um, yeah, we're we're definitely we're definitely in at the time round. There's no doubt about it. I think apart from obviously Liverpool being two points clear, um, the rest of it is in our hands. So look, obviously, you don't want to <coughs> put the pressure I'm on like, the wood, like last year and, and see everything uh, crumble away. But yeah, I guess. 
maybe it is better to sort of be in that position where we're the ones if they slip up we can take their spot rather than uh, the other way around yeah. but first of all before we have to worry about the next Premier League game uh, tomorrow morning we we get into that I don't think tomorrow game. morning they'll be off to Portugal they're probably um, I'd like to think that they're already there on right their now. way there or already there now considering it's what Wednesday morning over in uh I'd like to think Portugal that there. I'd like to think that they're probably there by now, um, probably probably having a bit of brekkie, um, getting themselves ready for the the game in the evening for them tomorrow <coughs> for us in the morning. Um, we obviously touched on it a little bit last week, but I'm thinking now we probably know what team we're going to see. I'd say it's very very similar to um, what we saw against Burnley. I think we're going to continue try and continue that form. Um, there'll be a few players that will probably get a rest, drop onto the bench, and then we might see them in the second half. Yeah, I mean, we saw Saka subbed off relatively early in that Burnley game. Um, Martinelli as well. So I'm sure if we see anything similar, a good first half performance, a couple of goals. A few players might a few get players a rest, will yeah. start dropping off onto the bench, getting a, getting a few more uh, minutes rest in those legs. And... Yeah, look, no disrespect to Porto, but you'd like to think we've got the, the squad depth to make a couple of changes and uh, still go and be, be favourites, pick up a, a good handy little win, but I guess you never really know. In those uh, away games, round of 16, it's been 14 years since we've made the quarters of the Champions League. So 14. Yeah, that's six years that we hadn't made the Champions League, and then for eight years prior, and, we got and we got we got we lost to Barcelona. Is that, that is that that year? And we won the we won that one league two one. That was in that was one of the eight years. That was the last time we. Oh, did we, was that round of sixteen that we lost to Barca? Yeah, yeah. So twenty ten. Who did we who did we lose to in the quarters? <laughs> AC Milan? No, that was 16 as well. That was round of 16. Um, well, Inter won it in 2010. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're just talking at the end of the thing. Kind of body tight. We want to do. I just wanted to like. Oh, sorry, what a fucking... Jesus Christ. Yeah, for Champions League round six things, so you have to go back. Quarterfinals. Barcelona. Barcelona. But it wasn't the one that we won to one. Um... <clears throat> no. Ah, I do remember the 4 1, though, I believe. Um, uh, surely, uh, you'd like to hope we, we can get like a good win on the board there's now. No curse, or if there is, it's, it's time for it to be lifted. You'd um, like to hope we get a win on the board now, first league. Yeah, Come home, yeah. nice and comfortable. Still go with a relatively strong team to keep that momentum yeah. going. Um, but look, yeah, be I'd be happy to come back even with a one goal uh, yeah. advantage. One goal advantage would do the trick. Do the trick, but uh, two or three, you'd also take that the way uh, the way we're scoring goals at the moment. I wouldn't take another. I would take another five goals. Definitely oh. wouldn't say no to it. No doubt about it. Um, um, good little warm up. Uh, little warm up. Little. Um, you know, warm the bellies, I guess, for uh, for our game against Newcastle at the weekend, uh, Monday morning there at home. Um, not the team that we we saw last year at all, Newcastle. They've sort of fallen off the off the, the tracks a little bit, haven't they? They're what eighth, ninth, tenth around that mark at the moment, uh, battling it out with uh, Chelsea, the likes of Chelsea and West Ham around that sort of territory of the table, I think. So. Yeah, a shadow of themselves. Um, I think, look, maybe since picking up that win against us, 1-0, they've just sort of collapsed. They've had a few injuries. Um, don't seem to have replaced the guys that have been out injured 
you know, one week they, they pick up a good win, the next week they're losing to a team you thought they might. You know, they are, they do have, I think, um, the most different goal scorers in the top leagues in Europe, yeah, I believe. Right. Um, which is quite a, a cool little stat to have. It's one of those um, ones you, you definitely rate it on, on FIFA. It's just a good, it's a good stat in general. It's, um, good it's, for team morale. It is. It's, uh, to have everyone's, we're just like we were just saying before, at the moment it's good for us having everyone scoring. There's got, people on the nerdy run? They've got everyone scoring. This, yeah, there's people on the nerdy run. Maybe unfortunate for your, your goalies, um, your Dubravkas and things like that. But um, Surely exempt from... The goals you'd, there, you know? you'd like to hope so. You'd like to hope so. Maybe you're gonna save a pin. Well, like a clean sheet counts. Yeah, well, that's a bit rough, possibly. But um, maybe save a pin. You know, I think that's probably worthy of getting off the nerdy run. But um, hopefully, no, no nerdy runs for any of the Gooners on the weekend. Now, you'd like to think, yeah, we pick up another three points. Um, hopefully, see, yeah, City and Liverpool drop a few points. Drop three mm-hmm. would be ideal. Dropping two, not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, ideally, a, a win for us and a couple of losses there would be great. 100%. Wouldn't, wouldn't want anything else, really. Um, yeah, I don't know about this one. I think, obviously, the way Newcastle have been playing this this season, the way we've been playing the last few weeks, you'd like to think we can go out there and get the job done. Um, but I guess that's the... That's the thing with uh, Newcastle. They've got plenty of good players that could uh, do the damage on the day. Bruno Gamarish, um, Gimarash, or however you say it. Bruno. Bruno G. Just going to lock it in as Bruno there. I'm not going to give them an attempt, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, they do. Player. they got so, lots, lots of quality. Of beautiful goals against uh, Nottingham Forest. Last time out for them, so... Lots of quality in the team. It is. It's a, it is a tricky one, but I'd like to think you don't want to see Joe Willett getting involved with any sort of dodgy VAR goals again. No, we don't want that. Um, definitely not. So hopefully, three points, couple of losses elsewhere, and um, we'll be walking away happy. Fingers crossed. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That'll be that'll be a hell of a way to to start next week. Yeah, good way to... I think uh, we're on Sunday, but I'm not sure about City. I'm pretty before. sure. Yeah, good way to roll into your Monday now. Um, the old bat and ball it's been a bit quiet on the bat and ball front but it has been uh, a little team 20 that's kicked off tonight now I just had a little bit before I believe we ended up uh, getting 2.15 uh, after bat- going up choosing to bat first of all uh, and currently Aussie are 70 for 2 we've just had a wicket in the last minute or so 70 for 2 off uh, 7.1 over so I suppose they're tracking along nicely. Yeah. Uh, maybe a couple maybe of wickets. Another, more, another wicket. That one's a just bit of pressure on. Who's that that's just dropped there? Uh, Warner. And he was he was tracking along nicely on 32. Um, so you've got Mitch Marsh and Glenn Maxwell. We know, we, um, we know what Glenn Maxwell can do in a 2020. So he could uh, he could get those runs himself in, in fairly quick time. Yeah, six or seven overs. Um, Who knows? how he's feeling after the old uh, coma out. Yeah, exactly. Could still be hungover. Um, Long like, time yeah. to be hungover, but he might have been Huge that pissed. Huge time to be hungover, but also could have been very, very pissed. Um, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully the, the lads can get out there and um, do the job. Tough first more to put that pressure on. Second one must be, what, Friday? Um, They're doing a combined, cha- you know the Chapel Hadley? Yeah. Um, they're doing a combined over T20s and one day as now. Okay. Uh, when is the next one? Friday uh, and then I'm just going to assume Sunday. I think at the Eden Park Friday, uh, which would have been pretty fat to go to, but... We, we did speak about it. Friday, Sunday, and then, yeah, that's it. Uh, and and then into some tests? Eden Park Friday, and then into some tests. Uh, no, I believe some ODIs first. ODIs first. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, no, it is, it's two tests, no ODIs. And then uh, it says the next thing on, on there on the old Google is the old uh, 2020s of the World Cup. So they announced that. that it's going to be over T20s and ODIs combined, but they're only playing T20s. Yeah. That's a, that's a fuzzy thing to, to get. That's a way to word it. 
Yeah, interesting, uh, interesting way that they've, they've gone about it there. But um, I haven't really seen too much else uh, in terms of the cricketing world over the last few days. It's not been too much, really. Um, there has been plenty of darts on, however. Now, um, obviously, as always, we didn't pull off a king of the hockey last week. Um, I believe, actually, very weird scenario happened. Can't remember who the first game was. I can have a look. I've got to get the nids up anyway to, to, to give you this week's one. But... Um, very weird thing happened. The first game it didn't come through, and I went on to check. And when I went on to check, it had said that it said that it was correct the first pick. So it was Rob Cross up against Michael Smith, and I had Michael Smith, but Rob Cross won the match. So there was no way, obviously, that the King of the Hockey had gone through. So I went on there. Look, the cash out option was there, so I cashed out eleven bucks or twelve bucks, barely anything for my ten dollars. And then chuck that on the next three games, but unfortunately, didn't come off. No MVG or no uh, Luke Littler. Humphrey's doing the job. Um, but MVG took it out, making it two in the row, beating Humphrey's there in the final last week. Um, he'll be looking to make it three this weekend uh, in Newcastle, although how he did um, get 6 0 this morning in the Players' Championship by Dobie, who is a Newcastle fan. Maybe that's him saying, don't try and do that. Uh, in my my, uh, hometown. In my hometown there this weekend, watch out! I'll be in the crowd watching. Um, but yeah, whether or not he can make it three in the row, six now, I'm sure he'll be wanting to go out there and say, "Mate, look, you did that to me. I'm I'm going to come out here and win in, in your place." Um, speaking of the players' championships, though, we've had two more over the last few days for hopes to get into. Nothing for him yesterday, unfortunately. But this morning, uh, must have won two games on the. I think two or maybe three. Uh, no, it must be two, one, two, eight, uh, 64, and then, yeah, into the top 32. Uh, coming up against Chizzy, who is, uh, it's a big feat come, uh, to come up against him. I think he lost 6-2 in the end, 6-3 maybe, but a couple of good wins. Um, good to see yesterday he was on the stream board, um, so I watched a little bit of his highlights there, up against, um, I think it was Timo Trecol, the French, uh, French player that he lost to yesterday, but good to see him uh, making a run. Um, Ryan Searle, though, probably the man to beat at the moment in terms of uh, maybe the form. Now, making two finals last week, making another one yesterday up against Gary Anderson, uh, a record-breaking Gary Anderson, I believe. Winner, and I think broke the most, broke the record for the most 180s in a day. So they play, obviously, for what, 1 to 8 down to the final. Best of 6 up until the semi, which I think is uh, first to 6, then first to 7, and then in the final it's first to 8. Um, and... Um, I think he had like 55 180s throughout the day, which is just unreal. Um, but lost, Ryan Searle finally make, getting his uh, luck, third time's a charm, uh, taking the win. Uh, and then this morning we saw a um, little bit of love here down under. Damon Hedder taking the win up against Chris Doby, coming back from 3 0 down. Uh, don't want to say the score, final score was 8 3. It might have been 8 3, it might have been 8 4. Um, but a good little comeback there. But like I said, they're off to Newcastle there on Friday. And I do have uh, a little King of the Yockey here pending for you. Uh, you start off your night, Michael Smith up against the Asp. I've, I've stuck true with Michael Smith there. Coming out at 375. We've then gone for Humphreys to take out Rob Cross. Uh, coming in at $3. We've then got Luke Littler. Only coming in at two dollars oh five for a King Yaki, which is like outrageous. I think Peter Wright, who he's playing, twenty two dollars or something like that. So it would have been good to chuck him in there. Uh, and then um, MVG to take out Gurren Price, um, coming in at five. Obviously a bit more even there. That ups you a little bit. You're chucking ten dollars and you're chucking your boost on uh, one thousand two hundred thirty eight returns. So one hundred twenty three dollar rounded up to one hundred twenty four dollar odds there, um, but also tempted just to go out there and chuck five bucks on Peter Wright to, to do it, you know. Um, you'd like to think if he does it, he's probably going to have to score well up against someone like Luke Littler. Um, so, you know, maybe like four 180s to three and pull out a big fish, you know, in the, you know, in the, in the first leg maybe, you know, get it over and done with 170 finish. Go out there, all he needs to do then is go out and win the match. Um, so, uh, Tempted twenty two dollars twenty two fifty something like that. Um, so very uh, crazy odds there, but that will be not tomorrow, following day there. So it might get up to you in time possibly. Uh, this time around we'll have to wait and see. Um, probably it, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's probably us for another week. <clears throat> so as always, if you've uh, made it this far, thanks for, for listening along or watching. If you're doing so on YouTube or Spotify, uh, remember to give us a like, subscribe to the potty and give us a follow on all your socials. Enjoy your week ahead if you're getting on uh, Nat's King of the Oki there. Make sure you do so responsibly. Nothing too um, outrageous. Remember to tune in next week for, for more juicy uh, King of the Oki bets uh, and uh, the rest of our shit chat. Um, so that's probably us signing off. We'll see you, see you next week. Ciao. Marshall skips away. Marshall skips away. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett. And the Dragons win the grand final. Whips that one away. And Kane Williamson and his team now world test champions.